Good morning, brothers and sisters. Today, Pastor Jason will be leading us to study the book of Numbers, chapter 24. The, over the past three chapters, talk about uh, Balaam, the king of Moab, invited Balaam to come. And God used a donkey to oppose him. Then Balaam followed the Moabite king to, His intention was to curse Israel He prophesied two times to bless Israel Yesterday, Pastor Joshua told us that God used His truth and faithfulness to protect us and today, we're going to see the third and the fourth oracle. The topic for today is God is pleased to bless us. So I talk about uh, Balaam, this person. So as a Gentile, um, it, he's being described as something, someone special. Sometimes if you look at the book of Kings, the king of Israel, I talk about several kings. But for Balaam, uh, we have used three chapters to talk about him. So we know that he has such a, in, an important position. When I look at his prophecy or an oracle, I know that his anointing is great, very strong. It's across the nations. So if you talk about this uh, prophecy from Balaam, it's over thousands of years. So you can see uh, how he looked things from afar. You know he's somebody of heavy weight. So even after uh, Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah died, he started to prophesy over like so many years, hundreds of years. So he mentioned 10 person. And then one of them is Balaam. That means the book of um, prophecies. prophecies. First, um, the subtitle here is God destined, predestined Israel be revived. First one, now when Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord to bless Israel, he did not resort to divination as at other times, but turned his face towards the wilderness. The place where, where Balaam prophesied is in the Moabite place where the people worship idols. And later, he was led to another place where he can see the border of Israel, can see um, some Israelite. And then he was led to another high place where he could see the whole desert and see the Israelite all the tribes. So, uh, over the number of times he prophesied, he discovered one thing. God is really pleased to bless Israel. I have to adjust my way. Originally, he said, uh, let's see what the Lord is going to say, then I will follow him. His attitude is that, oh, if uh, the Lord will curse Israel, I will curse. But if God bless Israel, I will do the same. But when it comes to this place, he discovered that every prophecy he prophesied, then God really blessed Israel. And in this place, then his heart changed. 
He knew that God really loved to bless Israel. So this blessing is just like、uh, kneeling down, bowing down, or we put it another way: you will be blessed in your marketplace. That is the work. Bow down before you. God loves Israel to be lifted up. God loves to see us being lifted up, so He could see this point. So according to this direction, then he prophesied. So he said he did not resort to sorcery as at other times.、Uh, this is what the evil spirits will work. Or like the idol worshiper. Oh, when they put seven bulls or seven rams, then God will bless me, and then will work through me. So they didn't offer up any sacrifices here in this place. He knew that.、Uh, he knew the heart of God. When he opened his heart to God, then the spirit of God come upon him. Uh, first five. How beautiful are your tents, O Jacob! Your dwelling places, O Israel. So, how can the tents be beautiful? So, remember when they came out of Egypt, they brought along all these、uh, cloths, all these tents. They have used it for forty years. And he saw it from afar. Actually, you won't be able to see the tents so beautiful. And and you could see only a group of people、uh, been wandering around the desert for forty years. They are like refugees. But Balaam could see in the spirit that the tents are beautiful. This is. His anointing. He knew that、uh, this tent with the presence of God is never the same. Verse six. Like valleys, they spread out, like gardens beside a river, like aloes planted by the Lord, like cedars beside the waters. How can he see the,、uh, these valleys being spread out or gardens beside the river? Because they were in the desert, it's without water. How can he? How could he see all these things? He could see this in the spirit only. He could see the whole of Israel is being blessed by God. Verse seven. The second part, the king will be greater than Agag. The kingdom will be exalted. That he ha- will be lifted up. So Israel will be above all nations in the world. <coughs> This is how God loved to see all nations bow down before Him. And all other nations bow down before Israel. That is to say, God loved to bless Israel. Then,、um, the prophecy spoken by Balaam is great. Verse eight: God brought them out of Egypt. They have the strength of a wild ox. This is the prophecy by Moses towards Joseph's tribe,、oh, but Moses hasn't prophesied yet. Moses only prophesies、uh, towards the end of Deuteronomy. So you can see that Balaam could、um, speak what Moses is going to speak. Verse nine: Like a lion, 
they crouch and lie down like a lioness who dares to rouse them. This is the anointing of Judah. This is how Jacob blessed Judah. In, the, in their generation, they don't have smartphone. He didn't know ahead of time. So even uh, before Jacob died, he said these words. But Balaam can prophesy using these words. Second part of verse 9. May those who bless you be blessed, and those who curse you be cursed. And this is uh, Abraham's blessing by God. He could know about this. Moses hasn't spoken yet, but he knew. He, so Balaam even knew what Jacob will be saying. So what God is said to Abraham, Balaam also knew. In this area, you see the anointing of prophecy of Balaam is really great. That's why Balaam also blessed the whole of Israel. He knew that Israel will be lifted up. In fact, he, he was really angry when he had spoken these words. Uh, we should say, uh, King Balak was really angry. Verse 10. Then Balak's anger burned against Balaam. He struck his hands together and said to him, I summoned you to curse my enemies, but you have blessed them these three times. Verse 11, now leave at once and go home. B King Balak was so angry that he asked him to just go away. Just leave me. I said I would reward you handsomely, but the Lord has kept you from being rewarded. And then he said it is the Lord who kept you from being rewarded. And then Balaam answered Balak in verse 12. Did I not tell the messengers you sent me? Even if Balak gave me his palace filled with silver and gold, I could not do anything of my own accord, good or bad, to go beyond the command of the Lord. Oh, so all these words, um, we, we have some area of, we have some area of thoughts. Didn't I tell you, even though you have given me all your silver and gold, I could not do anything of my own accord. I cannot go beyond the command of the Lord. He said these words a number of times. So let's think about this. So even if you give me one million US dollars, I can not do this. I dare not do this against the Lord. Oh, I s tell you again, even with one million US dollars, I will not do it. <laughs> when you listen to it, it seems that, oh, it's not enough money. Oh, but how about like a uh, hundred million dollars? How about 700 million dollars? Is that enough? So uh, we have to think through uh, his words. I remember in the old days, in the marketplace, the boss will say, ah, you should come and tell me ahead of time if something happened. Um, to avoid the, the, that I make a decision which is n different from what you think. Uh, you should come earlier to talk to me. In the Chinese um, saying, it's like uh, you take some money and, and come to me and talk to me. Maybe let me try. So it's similar to what um, Balaam was saying to Balak. Even though you have given me one million US dollars, I dare not go beyond the name of the Lord. So King Balak heard. 
And then, Balak cast him out. And they were departed. Oh, first 14. Now, I'm going back to my people. I not only bless Israel. And I will tell you how Israel will treat you in the future because your heart is no good. And then he prophesied again. Second point. God destined Israel to break, uh, to break the enemies. So uh, this is how God will talk or will treat Moab, and then he talked about the, the other kings. Whoever mistreated Israel, God will curse them. Verse 17, I see a star will come out of Jacob. A scepter will rise out of Israel. He will crush the foreheads of Moab, the skulls of all the sons of Sheth. You want to curse Israel? Don't think about this at all. I'm telling you, one day Israel will become so strong that he will destroy you and demolish all your power. So when he said this, God continued to say, verse 18, Edom will be conquered will become your inheritance. And then he prophesies for all nations. Verse 19, a ruler will come out of Jacob and he will rule over. Let's talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. Verse 20, talk about Amalek. He will be ruined, will be ruined. And talk about canines. And in verse 24, ships will come from the shores of Kittim. They will subdue Ashur and Eba, but they too will come to ruin. So you can see that um, the prophecy, the oracle of Balaam, is so broad. So you can see how God talked to Abraham and even Moses and also saying that Jesus Christ will come. So Balaam prophesies all these. And eventually, Israel will overcome all the nations, will surpass all nations. So this will happen towards the end times. And we can see how broad and how wide is the prophecy of Balaam. After Balaam can touch the heart of God, can know his will, the anointing of his prophecy is being greatly lifted up. And verse 25, Then Balaam got up and returned home, and Balak went his own way. So the two of them argued. They departed. So we could see very clearly in this chapter that God is predestined, is determined to bless Israel. God also is determined to bless us. If the story just stopped at verse 25, then it's good. So it's a good ending. But the Bible also mentioned one thing. Talk about in the end times, some people, they walk the way of Cain. And also Korah's rebellion. And also the wrongs, do, the wrongdoing of Balaam, the wrong intention of Balaam. 
Why we say this? Well, but when we look at it on the on the appearance, it seems that Balaam didn't have any problem. He really want to receive honor. He really want like silver and gold. But he dare not do anything beyond the command of the Lord. From the beginning to the end, he just has spoken according to what he think, and this is his wrong intention. And he's been like a struggling himself, binding himself with gold and silver. Oh, you ask me to curse Israel? Oh no, maybe you, tonight you spend、um, the the time here. Let me hear what the Lord said to me. So the first time God has already told Balaam about his heart, and the second time the the the, the people came, like the ambassador of、um, King Moab came. He said, "I will not do this for you." But don't worry. Okay, spend the night here, and then I will see what the Lord was talk to me. And God said, "Okay, okay, go." And Balaam said, "It's so good." Then he went, and God re really want to kill him. It seems that Balaam could understand the heart of God, but he's testing God. God never changes, and he knew that God has a steadfast heart. So he keep on asking, he keep on asking. This is really wrong. You already know the heart of God, and you pretend to be obedient, and you continue to ask God. Hoping God that God will change his heart, and eventually Balaam didn't go to curse Israel, but he thought of some evil、um, thoughts. I cannot prophesy. I cannot prophesy to curse Israel. So if I got this gold and silver, what should I do? Or、oh, is there any way that I can work around? So after they departed, Balaam led, and he's thinking of、uh, like a very good plot. So this、uh, Moabite king will not go and attack Israel. Or maybe we can ask God to kill the Israelites. I think this is safer. How how will he think of this? Or he led the Israelites sin against God. Oh, maybe I should ask、uh, the Moabite woman to lure the Israelites to worship idols. Okay, let us not oppress Israel, and just let them have a willing heart. Like to commit adultery this way. When we listen to this, it seems that there's no problem. He had done that. In the later chapters of Numbers, the Midianites they were destroyed. And while they were looking around at the corpse on the land, how come they saw Balaam there? Oh, Balaam was in Midian at that time, and he enjoyed all the luxury, all the luxurious living. And we're thinking, how come that Balaam would turn to be that kind of person? Then I thought about the snake in、e uh, the Garden of Eden. Eden. This scorpion, the snake, was judged by God. What has the snake? Done. 
The snake just said, Oh, really? This fruit you cannot eat? So he is raising questions. He's asking Eva these questions. And Eva's reply, he, she said, Oh, no, the snake said, I think it's not that way. God is afraid that after you have eaten this fruit, you might be so great, greater than God. I, it could be like that. From the beginning to the end, the snake has not asked Eva to eat from the tree of life, eat the fruit from the tree of life. You can see that the snake is very cunning. I have not taught her to eat that fruit from the tree of life. I ju I'm just telling her, maybe, uh, God, you are saying this to Eva. This is called temptation. That's why the snake was judged by God. Balaam did the same thing. If you look at his, his behavior, it seems okay. He knew the heart of God, but he has not followed him. He knew that God has to bless Israel. God has to lift up Israel and protect Israel. His, uh, Balaam said, uh, what I have done, I have not gone beyond the command of the Lord. Oh, you know, I have not listened to King Balak. I didn't do according to what he said. <laughs> oh, maybe while I'm talking to others, I feel that, oh, that the Israelites, they are lustful. I feel that, oh, the women in your country, they are beautiful. Then King Balak could understand what Balaam said to him. And then they did. They committed adultery, and Balaam seemed very successful. Uh, Balaam received what he wanted. And then the, uh, God asked the Israelites to kill them. What's wrong about this? In your behavior, it seems that you haven't done anything wrong. But your heart is no good. God knows. God knows that your heart, your, your mind is all about yourself. You want to receive the benefits. Of course, Israel, they, they have to face their own problems. They are no good. They, they, had, they are being tempted. They have to pay a high price. But all these things will not change the heart of God to bless Israel. The Israelites, they sin against God. They have to face the judgment. And even later, uh, the nation has fallen. But later when Jesus came, and then Jesus will come again. And this is how God destined Israel to be blessed. Israel has to be made accountable to God by themselves. But Balaam also received God's judgment just like the, the snake, which is very cunning. So let us pray for God to help us, to bless us. We know God used His truth and His faithfulness to protect us. We know God has to bless us. His heart never changes. But can we really come close to the heart of God? Can we not be tempted? So we have to be made accountable to God. We should not blame others by saying that uh, other people is not good to me. We should not blame whoever 
attack us by the curses. So we know that no witchcraft or no divination can hurt Jacob. So the divination cannot attack the church and also Christians because God is destined to protect and bless us. Can, are we not being tempted then? So we are being blessed and protected by God. Can my heart follow God this way? Let's pray for God to help us. So we have such a good God. How come we don't follow Him closely? So with such a good God, we can follow Him with great passion. He will protect you to the end. He predestined you to be successful. He predestined you to reign as king together with Him. So what we do is to love God with all our heart. Let's worship God together.